Hey everybody, this is Claire and this is Small Joyful Things. As always, I go to thrift stores or I go to state sales or sometimes I buy things from Craigslist. And I'm always looking for things that I personally find interesting or that I think you guys would find interesting. And then I bring them home, try and find out as much as I can about them and then tell you guys what I found. So here's what I've got today. And I guess this actually probably isn't going to look like much, except for like the interesting texture and my reflection. <laughs> um, it is a tray or possibly a trivet. Um, I bought this for four dollars and I actually got it because I found it incredibly interesting. And I kind of hoped that I would find the rest of the set that goes with it, but I never did. And I just think the surface of it is, the surface of it is quite unusual. And there's more going on here, and I'm I'm gonna get to that in a minute. But first, let's measure it up. Measuring tape is all twisted up. It is eight and a half inches across. It is seven and a quarter inches wide at the widest part, and just about an inch high, not even. There we go. So, so basically what we have here, like this is the kind of thing where I expect you to essentially use it as trivet. Uh, trivet, if you don't know, is the thing that you put down so that you're not burning your table. <laughs> um, they're usually made out of metal. I've seen a few ceramic ones before. Um, this one I'm not entirely sure about. I can't say for sure that it is a trivet simply because it doesn't, because it's got this kind of, this shape here that suggests that it might actually have some stuff that's supposed to sit here that this could actually be a display for a set or something and i just don't have the rest of the set all i have is the actual little tray that it, it comes in or come there it would have come on and so the only other thing i can imagine it could be would be a trivet where like you put your you know you, it's big enough so that you could probably put multiple things down on it maybe you could have like you know a gravy boat and something else or a large teapot that kind of thing again it is because it's ceramic you know, it's not going to burn your table and it's kind of lifted quite nicely off the table as well. Um, it does have gold here, but it's unfortunately been worn fairly badly. That would have been hand painted, but yeah, not so much. There is quite a bit of crazing on it on the surface. The iridescence is quite nice, it's still intact, but the, like, you can't really, for something that's old, you can't really get away from it. And of course, we have a mark, but I'll show you that. Yeah, there we go. There's the crazing. That's just the way of it when you're talking about vintage stuff, unfortunately. So anyway, what exactly do we know about it? And basically, apart from it just being interesting, I also got it because of this mark. This is obviously Wade's in England. And I was looking at this going like, this does not look like a Wade pottery mark. Um, I only really know of like only one or two things about Wade pottery or Wade's pottery. Like obviously I've done a video recently on the on the little on the little Wade whimsy. They're mostly known for that and for Giffer and everything. So this was kind of came out of left field and I thought there's gotta be a bigger story here. There's gotta be something else going on because that just does not really look like anything. And I thought that this would be a good opportunity to first of all have the the item to reference and then go looking and trying to figure out like where did it come from and what's the relationship? Is there another Wade's pottery? And it turns out that there is. So we jump over here. So here we go, Wade Heath and Co. And it, things kind of get a little bit complicated about Wade pottery itself. Like there isn't, there was not just one as far as I can tell. But this is another one of obviously the Stoke-on-Trent potters, like the ones in Staffordshire, the, in England, that, you know, they're so well known. And there's there's a kind of a bit of a, there's, there's kind of a bit of a, like the same, the companies essentially have the very similar names kind of running running concurrently, which are actually in different, different potteries. But anyway, I'll try and make sense of it. So Wade Heath & Co. was one of the potteries that had the name of Wade. The original pottery was formed by another guy, Henry Hallam, in the early 19th century. So they're producing industrial stuff, not important. So the company then moved to Stoke-on-Trent in the middle of the 19th century, it was taken over by George Wade at the beginning of the 20th century. Now, did a little bit of research in this. It was divided in the 1920s to form AJ Wade & Co. and Wade Heath & Co. 
Um, Wade Heath and Cora guys have produced a range of products with the back stamp, which was permission by Walt Disney. They made a lot of like Walt Disney memorabilia and whatever. And then uh, Art Deco things, and which were quite nice and everything. The other guys, AJ Wade and Co, became the Wade Whimsy guys, the ones who actually produced the Wade Whimsy in the 1950s. Not this company. This is Wade Heath and Co, different one completely. So quite a bit here. I'm going to put I can put a link here in the description. You can go and read up a little bit about what they were actually what they were actually doing. They had a program of modernization. They had they were definitely getting into kind of giftware. Um, there was a you know the, there was a lot of stuff like little Toby jugs. They had a reputation for copper lusterwares. Again, this is lusterware, so they were definitely doing this at some point. So after the 1940s, they started doing modernization. There was a record of an advert in 1947, but there's no listing beyond 1954. So we're kind of stuck. Like this is definitely vintage, but we have no idea where it's from. <laughs> Not so far anyway. We just know that like. They were known for their copper luster wares at some point around the Second World War. But have we got anything else than that? So apart from that, I'll get back to that in a second. George Wade Pottery, these are the other guys. There's a whole entry here on them. And obviously they became the Wade Whimsies. Um, I'll also put them down in the description, just as long as you understand that we are talking about two different companies here. But this is the thing we want to see, antique marks. And what we have here... Wade Heath & Co. Limited, High Street Works, Burton, Staffordshire, 1927 to 1938. And then the Royal Victoria Pottery in Staffordshire, whatever. Wade Heath, Wade's England with the Lion Mark circa 1927. That's great for us because... It basically looks like a dead ringer for that mark. Fantastic. This says circa 1927. I think it's probably going to be later than that. I think it might be the 1930s. Because again, we know that they started getting a reputation for luster wear sometime around the Second World War. I'm going to say it's in that particular area, that kind of time zone. But I mean, that's really great for us. It's like we do have a little, a little kind of an interesting little object of history. And it kind of is part of part of the story of Wade Pottery, <laughs> that you have these two different branches of the same company, one of which is dealing with things like the Wade Whimsies that really became like a like a household name and would have actually been quite well known and everything. And then you've got these other guys who, as far as I could tell, vanished in the 1950s after, you know, they, they definitely did produce stuff. They had some really nice things. They produced an entire range of stuff for Disney and then just kind of vanished after the Second World War, like a lot of companies did, unfortunately. Still, we have this. Considering I bought it for four dollars, I actually don't really know what else I could redo really with it. I'm not. I did actually check, and I don't think there's a market for them. So I did on eBay. I should have actually mentioned this, and I did a quick look to see Wade Heath or what kind of stuff actually sells. And it, to be honest, it's this kind of stuff is mostly their patterns and the Art Deco where that they did that they became very well known for. Some of their Art Deco stuff, like say that, is absolutely phenomenal. The, the little kind of like bird jugs come up as well. They're lovely. I cannot get over that. That's so, so cool. That's that's entirely my jam. But yeah, you can see there's a bunch of little, like the like these the, 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 yeah, the flax the flax ones. They came up as well as in the in the, the the company profile as well as being something that's quite popular. That their art deco stuff. Not so much the piece that we've got, I don't think. And the prices are kind of you know, kind of all over the place for something quite nice very art deco you're going to get up to like let's say you're going to your 40 or 50 dollars not what we have unfortunately so so what's the story with this i would say it's probably worth about four dollars at most um doesn't seem to be much of a like much of a market for it it's nice i have to say and i'm glad that i found out something about wade pottery now um it, i've definitely had my curiosity satisfied in that respect i'd say i'm probably going to be sending it back to the thrift store Hopefully someone will find the rest of the set, put it together and be able to enjoy it. You know, as it is, I don't think I can do really much else with it other than learn something and be happy that I found it. So here you go. This is my small joyful thing for the day. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.